Hi friends, welcome to Naropath Yoga. Today's class is all about new beginnings and fresh starts. So I've incorporated a lot of postures into this class that build strength and confidence and work on balance and stability. That We actually start out on our backs and work our way up to standing and ending in mountain pose. So it's this really beautiful symbolic class that reminds us about coming from death to life and old to new and just opening up doors to what lies ahead for us. This class was largely influenced by a lot of my friends and family who are going through the process of turning a new page or turning a new leaf into a new chapter of their lives. People who are going through struggles and they're making decisions to better their lives or take the steps that they need to come out of a season of darkness. Other people in my life, it's exciting and they just got new jobs or they just moved and they're just starting over. All of these people that I think about in my life have really influenced this class. My husband and I both recently got new jobs and we're starting a new chapter in our lives. We have gone through a very difficult and trying time over the past few years, which as time goes on, I will share more about that story and how that has changed us, but it has also brought us to where we are and we're extremely thankful for that growth period in our lives together. This class is also a really great symbolic gesture of what Christ has done for us through bringing us from death to life through his work on the cross. So throughout this class, you can marinate on that and think about what Christ has done for you in giving you new life and a new beginning. Before we get started, I'm going to Bob Ross the postures across the, the video so you can get an idea of some of the postures that we're going to be doing today so you can kind of mentally prepare for what's ahead um, and just think about how you might be feeling in your body today because as we go through this class, you should be aware of your own flexibility and your own strength and how, just how you're feeling just emotionally or in your body. If you have any injuries or you're just not really feeling something, feel free to skip it or modify it um, as you need to. I provide a couple different times throughout the class where I give suggestions of ways that you can change that posture. So at any point in time, feel free to do that throughout class. I'm really looking forward to teaching this class today. I will meet you on your mat. So like I said, we're gonna start in corpse pose. So what we're going to do is just gently roll back and simply lay down on our mat. So any um, physical activity that begins with laying down can't be bad, right? So for corpse pose, you just want to relax your entire body. So the backs of your hands, have them resting on the floor or the ground, wherever you are. Your feet can kind of fall open to the side. You can even shut your eyes here if that feels good, if that makes you feel more relaxed and calm. And you can keep your head facing up towards the sky or to your ceiling. And just release any tension from your neck from your hips, from your feet, anywhere that you might feel like you are holding tension. So we're just going to take a minute here and just relax in the corpse pose and breathe. Maybe take a couple deep breaths, fill up your belly and into your ribs and up into your collarbone area with your breath. And let it exhale through your mouth. Make sure you're not clenching your jaw or squishing your eyes really tight together or causing any tension in your forehead. On your next inhale, draw your right knee up towards your torso. Keep your foot 
flex in both of your feet, actually. And gently pulling your knee back towards your shoulder. So you want to be pulling your knee towards your right knee towards your right shoulder. Gently. Maybe open it off to the side a little bit without letting your hips come off the ground, though. And then let it release back to a, about a 90 degree angle from your hip. And then you just want to pull it over to the left. Take a nice twist in your spine. Feels really good. And you can look with your with your whole head off over to the right. You can let your arm flap out to the side. You're going to feel a nice twist stretch in your torso all over. Take a deep breath here. And then look back up to the ceiling and the sky, and then let your whole body return to the mat. Stretch your leg back out. And then your next inhale, pull your left leg in. Same on this side. Keep both of your feet flexed. And pull your left knee up towards your left shoulder. You want to keep both of your hips on the mat. My neighbor starts started mowing. If you can hear that, I'm sorry. It's the, the joy of doing yoga outside. Sometimes things happen. Such is life. Onward and upward. It's the same thing on this side. We're going to take our knee to about a 90 degree and then start pulling it gently over to the right. You can stick your left arm out to the left. You can look off to the left with your head. You feel that stretch in your side, maybe even up in your shoulder. On your next inhale, you can bring your head back straight to protect your neck and your spine, and then let your whole body kind of rest back into the mat. On your next inhale, just bring both of your knees up towards your chest. You can, if you, you can either hold on to your knees or you can clasp your hands. If you're feeling really flexible, you could even wrap your arms around and grab each of your elbows. I'm not feeling that today, but if you do, more power to you. Just don't push it. Just listen to your body and just have respect and honor for your body and where you are. Today might be different than yesterday and it's going to be different than tomorrow. So just be aware of your body's needs right now today. You can release that a little bit and then you can hold the backs of your legs and we're just going to start rocking like a little bit gently back and forth or up and down. I don't know. What motion is this? And we're just going to come up to seated. And then find um, a, flat, a flat spot. If My ground is a little rocky here. So... Find a place where you can feel both of your hip bones, your seat bones, if you will, firmly on the ground. And then we're just going to come into what's called boat pose. So you can lift both of your feet off the ground and bring them up to about a 90 degree angle. And then when you're ready, you can lift your arms off the ground and point your fingers down towards your feet. You can, if you're not feeling that, if you're not feeling super steady or you don't feel like your core is strong enough for that yet, you can leave your, your hands behind your, behind your legs. But we want to keep our back as flat as possible when we're in this pose to, to protect it. And we're just going to really be pulling in with our core. And instead of rounding in your shoulders, we want to think about pulling them back and keeping them down away from our ears without being forceful. So it's just a, ooh, the ground, I tell you, it's a little bobbly here. 
So we're just going to hold this for a minute. Not a minute, a couple breaths. So think about pulling in your, your core. We can feel it in our quads even at this point. And then if you want to grab hold of the backs of your legs, we're going to roll back and then come right back up into boat. And then this time we're just going to extend out and don't put your feet on the ground and don't let your shoulders touch the ground either. We're just going to hold, hold all of it up so you can feel it in your core and then come right back up into boat. And then release everything down. You just roll over your feet. We're going to come into a tabletop for just a second. So in tabletop position, we talk about alignment here for a second. You want to have your, anytime we're on our hands um, in tabletop, you want to make sure that your shoulder is stacked over top of your wrist as much as you can in your mind feel that happening in your body. And then your hips are going to be stacked over your knees. You want to keep your core pulled in. You don't want your belly sinking down, and you also don't want to be like arching it up a ton. You just want to keep a lot of integrity in your body and your joints. So you're going to be here for just a second, and you can start to feel your core even working in this posture. And then start to sink back, your hips back on towards your heels. And you can spread your knees apart a little bit and then take your big toes and kind of touch them together and slowly reach your hands out into child's pose. And you can let your forehead rest down onto the mat if your body allows that. If not, that's fine. You might be here and this might feel really good and not uh, be stressful for your joints and your body where you are right now. And that's totally fine. You could also, if you really wanted to, bring your knees together and let your arms rest back beside your body with your head, your forehead on the ground. This is a different variation called embryo, but it's also really nice. If you're not in child's pose, reach your arms straight out again. Feel that stretch in your shoulders. And then using your core, pulling your core and hinge your body forward until your shoulders are over top of your wrists. Keep your legs stretched out about your feet, maybe about hip widths apart. And this is called Cobra. So we're feeling a stretch in our core here. And we're feeling our shoulders strengthening. You want to press all your toes down into the mat so your legs are still engaged in this posture. We're not just releasing our entire body into relaxation. We're still using all of our, our muscles. And then we're just going to flow a little bit back and forth between these two postures. So back in the child's pose and feel that stretch. And then on an inhale, come in to Cobra. And then on an exhale, back into child. And inhale to Cobra. And exhale to child. If you're on a really hard surface, you could always fold up a, a towel or a blanket and put it under your knees if that, um, if that makes you more comfortable. And just keep going with this flow back and forth, feeling our core heat up a little bit. On your next inhale, when you come to Cobra, actually tuck your toes under, lift your knees off the mat, 
and you'll find yourself in a plank. Who doesn't love a good plank? Here we are. So in plank, you want to keep your core engaged. You want to make sure that your hips aren't drooping and your hips aren't standing way up in the sky. Try to visualize your body as a um, just a straight line as much as possible. And what we're going to do is just tilt your body and open up to the side into side plank so you can stack your feet or if you're not feeling that that's not the greatest for you you can keep them both on the mat but just on the sides so we're just going to breathe here for a second on your next inhale Bring your arm down along your side and start to pivot. If you can, keep holding your arm to the side and have a little one arm plank there for a minute and then release back to the ground. And we're just gonna do that on the other side. So start to pivot your feet or stack them and reach the other arm to the sky. that arm down to your side and start to pivot back so your torso is facing the mat. Have that one arm plank for a second and then release your hand down. So we're going to go back into downward facing dog. So with your floor pulled in, start to pull your hips up towards the sky. And you're aiming to make a upside down V or triangle with your body. So you're pulling in with your core and you're pushing that energy down through your legs so your heels go towards the ground. You should be putting weight in the thumbs and forefinger side of your hands. They should be about shoulder widths apart. Your feet should be about hip widths apart. It's a very strong posture. Your whole entire body is working here. Your kneecaps should be kind of pulled up your legs so your quads are working. Then we're just gonna, we're gonna go into warrior two here from this downward dog. So we're gonna take our left leg, our left foot, and draw it up and place it between your hands. If you can only get to here, you can just kind of walk it up there if that's what's happening for you today. So we're gonna spin our back foot down so the outer edge is on the mat. And as we start to rise up to stand, your left heel should be about in line with the right arch of your right foot. And we wanna keep our knee stacked over our ankle. Our whole, le our whole back leg should be engaged our quad should be working and we can reach our hands out from our body and we want to keep our shoulders stacked over our hips here you can look out over your left hand take a couple breaths And then we'll go into reverse warrior. So we want to lean back back to the side. This is a, a side pivot. So you can feel a stretch in your left side and you can reach your right hand down your right leg. You wanna, as much as possible, we wanna keep that same angle in our front leg. We don't wanna be coming up like this. We wanna maintain that bend. You can look down your back leg. If you feel balanced, you can look up. That's a bit challenging sometimes, but give it a go, give it a whirl. And then we're just going to slowly cartwheel both of our arms back down. Return our leg back to the mat into plank. And we're gonna go through a vinyasa chaturanga. 
So from plank, kind of push on your toes so your shoulders come a little bit above your, uh, your wrist. And start to bend your arms to a 90 degree angle. And then flip your feet over and press up into either a cobra where we were a little bit ago. Or if you tighten your legs up, you can lift your knees off of the mat and you'll be an upward facing dog. And then pull back just like we did before, back up into downward facing dog. So you can find that feet with. Your hands pressure in your thumb and forefinger side and pull in your core and lift your kneecaps. And we're going to go into warrior two on the other side. It's the same thing, your right foot between your hands, pivot your back foot to the side. Heel should be in line with your left arch, knee at a 90 degree angle and your arms out from the body shoulders above hips and then we'll just breathe here and then we'll do that reverse warrior on this side so we're going to tilt backwards with our left hand reaching down our left leg our right arm comes back our knee stays bent you feel that stretch cartwheel, arms back, and we'll run through that chaturanga again. So we're going to push forward a little bit on our toes, bend down to a 90 degree with our elbows, flip our feet, press up into upward dog or cobra, your choice, and then pull our hips up to the sky, pressing our heels back down for downward facing dog. So we're gonna run through that again on both sides using breath to movement. So on your next inhale, we'll bring our foot. Sorry. So on your next inhale, we'll bring our left foot up between our hands. Open up into warrior two. Exhale here for a second. Inhale into reverse warrior. Exhale down to plank. Inhale, move forward. Exhale down and through chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg up. Open out to warrior two. Reverse. Plank. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. So from here, we're going to move to mountain pose. So you, we have to get our feet up to about where our hands are. So you can either walk your feet up or you can just simply step up. Or if you feel super duper today, you can hop. So look up towards your hands, bend your knees gently, and then pop your feet up to where your hands were. So we're just gonna actually dangle here for a second because that feels really nice right now to me. You can bend your knees a little bit. You bend your knees and grab your elbows and just kind of fold over. This is called a rag doll. And then we're gonna gently roll all the way up, straightening out our spine. And meet in mountain. So mountain pose. 
sweat these. Mountain pose, we're standing at the top of our mat, or anywhere on your mat really if you want, and we're finding balance and stability and rootedness down to the earth. So we have, you can lift your toes off the mat and then press them down into the mat and feel your weight through all sides of your feet. You can pull up on your arches or from your arches. You can engage your, your quads by lifting your kneecaps. You want to have your knees stacked over your ankles, your hips stacked over your knees, your shoulders stacked over your hips, and your spine is lengthening and your core is pulling in, and your shoulders are, they're not crunching up, and they're not being like super jutted back either. We're having what I think about um, like action figure body, where your shoulders are sort of stuck where they are. Just be aware of your joints and your your muscles, that everything is working and engaged right now. So we can take our arms and kind of pivot them so our palms are facing forward and that brings an energy into our arm muscles. So that weight should be kind of evenly distributed throughout your feet. Just breathe here for a second. And we're going to move into goddess or sun god. So we're going to take our right foot and we're going to open it wide. And so your feet are going to be kind of pointed towards the corners of your mat and start to bend. Both my knees just cracked. We're going to start to bend our knees into uh, a wide squat kind of. Um, so we want to keep our back straight. So imagine you have a wall behind you and you're like leaning up against it sort of. Um, so we want to keep an awareness of our back and protecting our spine. We don't want to be leaning forward or leaning way back, um, but we definitely want to keep a straight back. And you can really feel this in your legs. So just going to breathe here for a second. Keep your core pulled in and kind of tuck your tailbone under a little bit if if you can do that, that helps keep nice alignment and integrity in your body. And I have my hands in prayer pose or prayer position. So if you press your palms together, you can help keep your chest engaged a little bit as well. And then inhale, release that, stretch your arms up over your head, keeping your, your quads still engaged a little bit. We bring your hands back together, down into prayer position, and you can sink right back down into goddess. So we're sun god or goddess, whatever makes you happy. We're going to flow through that a couple times. So we're just going to inhale up and exhale back down. Inhale back up and exhale back down. Inhale back up. And exhale back down and hold this for a second. We're going to do a little balancing with this. So keeping the same posture, just lift your right heel off the ground. And you can feel that change the whole pose pretty quickly in the way that your muscles are working. And then release that and lift your left heel off the ground. and release that. Inhale, come up, touch your hands together, pull them down into prayer, bend your knees, pull in your core, back down in the goddess. This time we're going to lift both of our heels off the ground and hold this for a couple breaths. Try to steady your breath so your inhales and exhales are the same length. My legs are shaking a little bit. I don't know if you can see that and release down. Inhale back up and then just kind of heel toe your feet together back into mountain for a second. And 
we're going to, our last balancing pose is going to be tree pose, which is one of my favorite postures. It really helps to find that balance and rootedness to the ground, which I really love a lot. The forest and the woods being around trees is my favorite place to be. So tree pose is a favorite. There's a sweat bee flying around me. So from mountain tree pose, depending on how you feel today or how you feel your balance is, you might want to simply keep your toes on the ground and just kind of rest your heel on your lower shin and bring your hands to prayer pose, with your thumbs kind of pressing towards your chest. Or you can put your whole sole of your foot on the inside of your shin. Or you can bring it up to the inside of your thigh and stay here. So with this, you really want to be pulling in your core. You definitely want your left leg in this posture, your knee cap to be pulled up so your quad is engaged and your your right leg is going to also be working pretty heavily here. Your Your butt cheek is going to be awake. It's just going to find balance here for a couple breaths. If you're having trouble balancing, you can find a spot on the ground or the floor and really focus your gaze there. You might want to try different arm variations so you can have your hands down away from your body. You could raise your hands up above your head. You could even touch the palms of your hands together. On your next exhale, just release that foot down to the ground. And then we'll go to the other side. So again, on the other side, just do the same foot positioning that you did on your right side. So you can either have your toes on the ground and just rest your heel against your ankle. You could bring your sole of your foot to the inside of your shin, or you could pull your the sole of your foot to the inside of your thigh. So again, you're really rooting down through your foot with your toes, with the, all sides of your foot. You are pulling up with your kneecap. Your core is pulled in, so you're very stable. You're stabilizing yourself with your core. And then you can bring your hands to prayer for a couple breaths. Make sure your shoulders aren't crunching up or you're not collapsing in on yourself, but there's just a, an opening throughout your collarbone. You might want to try the arm variation with your arms down away from your body. Or raise them up above your head. Or even touch the palms of your hands together. If you do this, again, just make sure that you're not crunching your shoulders up towards your ears just to keep those action figure shoulders. We're going to end our class actually in mountain pose. Like I said, we started in corpse pose and we're going to end in mountain pose as a symbolic gesture of coming from a So we're going to end in mountain pose as a symbolic gesture of death to life or from old to new. We just did tree pose to remind us of growth and stability and connectedness. So 
So we're just going to end in mountain pose as a reminder to us about the firmness that so we're just going to end in mountain pose together, breathing, remembering the stability that we have in this life through our creator. You might want to shut your eyes if that feels good to you, if you can maintain balance there and just breathe together for a few breaths. Bring your hands together in prayer. And if you want, you can bring your hands to your forehead, your thumbs to your forehead, reminding us to have wisdom in our minds. Thumbs to your chest to remind you to have trust in your heart. Your thumbs to your lips to remind you to have kindness in your words. Namaste. Thanks so much for joining me for class today. I hope you enjoyed it. If there are suggestions for classes that you'd really like to see, poses that you want to learn, or just different styles or topics or themes, please let me know. I'd be happy to work those into my schedule. Please join me for class again soon.